Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and it is time for the fifth and final block, that center block from the Milky Way wall hanging. Now this is a quilt pattern from Coats Thread Company. I'll put a link in the description so you can follow along and print out the patterns. And it is a paper pieced pattern which means those points are very precise and it's awesome pattern to put together. The fabric has been very very pretty. It is the Free Spirit line and what's great about this fabric is because it's a solid fabric there's really no right or wrong side with the fabrics. It looks good on either side which has made it a breeze on putting this together because we've not had to worry about the wrong or the right side. The color ranges start from yellow to orange and go up to red. It's a very pretty block. So I started with the whole range of colors and what I did is I marked all of the colors with a letter and then I corresponded it with the fabric. So I wrote on these little flat pins all of the letters that correspond and that way I was able to do it through the entire project. So when I put this away for a month I was able to pull it back up again. I did use the Coats paper piecing thread because it is very very strong. You need a thin thread but you need a strong thread because you do need to rip off the paper. And I do like to use a Microtech needle because it does put nice holes in the paper. Makes it easy for ripping that paper off and it still keeps it nice and strong. On the instruction sheet I did write the letter that corresponded with the fabric color. On the back side they've given you a color direction which is perfect to be able to follow along. You'll also find a page that you need to print out four times and print it out on paper that you're going to be able to sew through and that is easily removable. I like to do four that I'm going to sew on and I like to do one as a reference. I do a couple of things with the reference one. And the first thing I do is I label all of my colors. Even though the colors are written there I want my letters to correspond with my letters. Then I will be able to take this and cut out all of the pieces. And I'm going to use those pieces as templates. And you don't have to worry about getting them messed up because you're going to be able to follow them with A1, A2 and then on the other side you have B1 and B2. And I use that cut piece as a template. So I'm able to cut a piece of fabric the size that I'm going to need plus some so I know I will not be running short. When I have all of the pieces cut you can either just keep them in the piles and draw from them as you need them or you can put them all in order. So you can start with A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on. So you have all of the block in one pile in order. Then you can work on all of block one at the same time. The pattern comes in two pieces. So the two halves are going to make a corner. So you're going to need four of each of these. When you print them, print them at the actual size and test that square to make sure it's a one inch square. If you photocopy them sometimes it's off a little so it's better if you print them right from the PDF and make sure you test that one inch square. That way you know they're all going to go together. So I'm going to work on one side which is going to be the A side. So I'm just going to cut A out of all of my four papers. So my A is going to correspond with my A pile. And we start with A1. I'm going to want to make sure that my piece A is underneath my A1 and make sure that that A1 is covered completely. Now if you hold it up to light you will be able to see. I do like to use flathead pins because I find that they're not in the way as I'm using them. And I want to pin that back fabric on but I want to stay out of block A2 because I will need to use that sewing line as a fold line. Now that it's pinned on we need to find the quarter inch seam. In order to find that take a piece of template plastic with a really nice straight edge and put along the seam from one and two because that's the first line you're going to stitch. Place it right along that edge and fold the paper back along that template plastic. I do like to use the add a quarter ruler. I'm going to be able to take that ruler and put it right along that paper 
and that little lip is going to give me that quarter inch seam allowance so I'll be able to cut off the extra. Now I have a perfect quarter inch. I know that that piece is completely covered. I'm ready to get A2. I know that my A2 piece is big enough. I'm going to be able to match it up. And if you turn the paper over, you're going to have that quarter inch seam allowance and you want to match up the two edges. If you needed to worry about right side and wrong side, you would need the two right sides touching. Match up that cut edge and then pin the fabric onto the paper. And you can pin it way away from that seam allowance so you're not going to have to worry about running it over with the needle. Because I have that fold line, I know that's where my seam is going to be stitched. So I know my pins are going to be out of the way. That's just going to hold it in so that when you bring it to the machine, you will be stitching between the A1 and A2, that joining line. Start about two stitches into one block and then stitch all the way following that line coming right off the fabric. Make your stitches on your machine a little bit smaller than you would normally have. If you do a 2.5 normally, you can bring them down to a 2. And that's going to just make that a little tighter and stronger. When that seam has been stitched, you have that beautiful quarter inch seam allowance. And you were nowhere near the pins. You can take your pins out. And you need to press that last piece of fabric that you put on open. Now make sure that you press it nice and tight against the thread lines because you do not want to have a space in here and that will keep those points nice and sharp. A2 is done. Now we can go to A3. You need to find that seam allowance for A3. So you're going to take the template plastic again and fold it along that stitch line. And if you have any stitching, if you just give it a little tug, the paper is going to come right off and you'll be able to fold that down, use your outer quarter ruler again, and take off the extra. Now you have a new quarter inch seam allowance. And we need to find the A3 pile. Take the A3, match it up with your cut quarter inch, pin it, turn it over, and stitch along the A3 line. And when A6 has been put on, stitch right through the seam allowance, right at the point. You're not gonna see the stitching because it's going to be in the seam allowance, but what it's going to do is it's going to hold that piece down so it's not flapping and in the way. Now the block really doesn't quite look like it's supposed to, but that's okay. Just trim along the dotted lines and it's going to be ready to go. You will see in the corners that it doesn't come to a point. Follow the dotted lines and round those corners off because they're going to nestle together perfectly when you get to have the blocks going together. And when A is all trimmed up, it looks more like the block. Now you need to do this for block B. And when block B is all trimmed up, the two are going to fit together. And because you've trimmed off these corners, when you put them together, they match perfectly. So take all of A and B and sew them together and you will have a square. And when you open it up, you have perfect little points. I like to remove the paper from the seam allowance before I sew the squares together. Take the seam allowance and press it open. That's going to keep that nice and flat on the front and you're going to notice your points a lot better. You now will be able to sew them together in units of two. And this will be half a block. Before you do that, remove just a little bit of the paper from the corner. You'll be able to match them up and sew the quarter inch. And for this particular block, once you have the two units together, I would recommend opening this up and pressing it flat like you did the other two. And that's going to keep all of the seams flat along the back. You will be able to remove all of the paper along the seam allowance. Now match up the seams and you can stitch that quarter inch going right through that center point. And it's going to match up beautifully as you go along. Now you get to remove all the paper. And that thread is strong enough 
take that ripping, having those stitches a little bit smaller and that strong thread definitely helps. Perfect quarter inch seam allowances with a lot of perfect little points. Block five is done. Five, four, three, two, one is done. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's all done. I do hope you join me when we get to put this all together. I'll put a link in the description so you can follow along. And as always, thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. And as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.